Hello, my name is the Balls of Us, and welcome to my official solo queue guide. <laughs> Pio! Oh! Penta! Penta Kim! Nice. <laughs> oh, I the Camille. Hey. Oh, 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 <laughs> in case you're new here, like I said earlier, I'm the boss of us, league streamer on Twitch, who is currently challenger, and my favorite champion is Sion. So why me? What gives me the right to teach you how to play the game? I've been a challenger every single year. Last year I peaked rank 11 or 12 on EU, I also got challenger in Korea. Damn! This year I peaked rank 15 and I'm currently challenger. So those would be my kind of qualifications, I guess. <laughs> what type of guide is this going to be and why am I making it? This guide has going to have tips and tricks for my top 4 champions, Sion, Gragas, Quinn and Ramus. But it is not only going to be a champion guide, it's also going to touch on general knowledge of the game, right? So why why am I making this guide? A big reason for why I'm making this guide is there are concepts in League of Legends such as freezing, slow pushing, you know, you shouldn't build armor versus magical damage. These you have seen in all types of guides here and there, but there are concepts or tricks that I use in every single one of my games that I haven't seen or heard anyone in the League community ever talk about. So a big reason why I'm making this guide is to teach you guys something completely new about the game that I haven't heard, and you probably never heard anyone talk about before. <laughs> before I get into the tips and tricks, I'd like to do a quick disclaimer first. Lately, a lot of people have been wanting me to be permanently banned for my playstyle and stuff like this. I'm not making this guide to try and defend myself, or I'm not making this guide to force my playstyle onto anyone. There are so many people that play a lot more normally, who are way better than me. So I'm not saying that how I'm playing the game is the correct way or anything like that. All I want to do with this video is show how I've been getting high elo these last few years, and maybe teach you a thing or two. That's all I want to do, I'm not looking for more controversy. Alright, getting into the runes here then. We got my top 4 champions, Sion, Gragas, Rambus and Quinn. Starting off with Sion, we got the Grasp setup. I guess what's important here is the Demolish and the Conditioning. Never go Shield Bash and never go Second Wind or, or Bone Plating. This is very crucial. These are the better runes. And then always go Minion Dematerializer. Minion Dematerializer is, in my opinion, the strongest rune in League of Legends. I like to go magic resist over armor because it's more gold efficient. Health doesn't really work on Sion because you already get so much health. And other than that, it's pretty, pretty standard. If you feel confident enough to play AD Sion, you feel like you have a lot of games on Sion, this would be the rune page setup. Again, demolish conditioning, something like this. And then you were to build lethality. I only suggest this if you feel like you mastered the champion first. Going into Gragas, face rush Page. I'm not 100% sure with the secondary, uh, minion demolizing magical footwear. Sometimes I switch it up to maybe demolish conditioning, whatever whatever I feel like playing. This is this is what I go most of the games. It's pretty standard, nothing to really think about. Moving on to Ramus, we got the Aftershock. Always needs to go Aftershock. Aftershock is very important on Ramus. It helps you one shot into the late game. And here again, minion demolizer. You want to use them one melee, one range, one cannon. Go double armor. You never want to put yourself in a position 
where you're playing versus an AP champion. So this is always gonna be double armor because it gives more damage. Other than that, it's all pretty standard. Going into the Quinn, we got the Electrocute page. We're not playing Press the Attack, we're not playing Lethal Tempo. We're going Assassin Quinn and this is the Room page I use every single game when I play her. You're playing an Assassin, non-ADC. With the mid-season update being right around the corner, it's a little bit weird to talk about what items to build, because some of this is going to change. For Sion, the Lethality build is going to be completely different. The Tank Sion build is going to be more or less the same. Uh, some Fire Swiftness Boots, always Swiftness Boots, Hard Steel Hull Breaker, Titanic, um, Starting Cool, of course. That's going to be about the same. Gragas, you want to start Mana Crystal Refillable, and then you want to go into Lost Chapter and get Ionian Boots, and then you want to do the book build. So the book build is you stack Fiendish Codexes, multiple of them, because it's a very gold efficient item, and then you get Everfrost somewhere between there. That's also going to be quite the same as after the mid-season update and then what you want to do late game is you want to finish the books one after the other so you want to finish the cosmic drive sonia's etc etc quinn this one is going to be completely different uh ramus you're starting cloth armor and then you rush four mail four mail is your the only damage you have in your kit so you gotta rush this item as soon as possible uh you get sword boots for more magic damage you don't need ap for this to work and then you rush armor items like chain vest wardens you get even shroud even shroud is better than jack show and then you go into gargoyle and then you finish the items don't build these items on ramus they're very bad especially frozen art never build this but one thing i am going to go over are terrible items you should never build and these are all the dorans items health potion corrupting potion and control ward why should you never build these items well first of all they're not very impressive but that's not the reason why you shouldn't build them the reason you shouldn't build them is because they all trick the bounty system into thinking you have money that you don't have so I'll give you an example. Let's say you buy a Doran's Blade, and then you sell it for 180 gold. Then you technically lost 270 gold, but the bounty system will still think you have that amount of money. So if you're even with your opponent in items, but you bought a Doran's that you later sold, the bounty system is gonna give you a bounty, because you technically had a lot more gold, you just ended up wasting 270 of it, because you decided to buy a Doran's in the early game. Never build these items on any champion in the game. Support, I'll give you a pass to buy like one or two control wards, but any other champion in any other world should never buy any of these. With summoner spells, I always go TP. I think Ignite on top lane is a huge mistake. TP will give you way more. So I usually go TP and Flash, or TP or Ghost, depending on what champion I play. I never take Ignite. Ignite on top lane is bad. A huge part of the game is drafting and champion select, so you need to know how to do it right. What most people do is, they'll look at the enemy champion, enemy team comp, and then they'll counterpick with a champion of their own. But a much more important thing to think about is a rule that I always follow, and I call it the everything rule. So the best draft team comp you can possibly have is a team comp that does everything a little bit. So they have a frontliner, they have AP and AD damage, they have range, they have AOE, they have a mage, an assassin, an enchanter, they have everything, right? That is the best type of team comp. It's a team comp with a little bit of everything. So what I usually like to do is, I like to fill all the spots that my team missed. So if my team picked a really squishy team comp, I pick a frontliner. If my team picked no CC, I'll pick a champion with CC. If my team picked only melee champions, I'll go queen top. And I'll try and fill all the stuff we don't have in a team comp. So what I'm gonna do a lot of my games is, the enemy team will pick Gwen, let's say. I'm purposely picking Sion into it, knowing it's a bad matchup. But the team needs a frontliner. So I'll purposely get a good team comp, but ruin my own laning phase. That is much more important than having a good matchup, is to have a good team comp. The everything rule. In majority of my games, around 14 to 15 minutes, my KDA looks something like this, or this, or this, or even any of these. And now you might say, Baus, you're a damn inter, you're a terrible laner, what are you doing? But you haven't seen the full story. Taking a look at the same game, same opponent, same timestamp, and then we take a look at the goal lead, and you'll see that I actually have a goal lead in majority of my games, and it's not even a small goal lead, 
Sometimes it's a goal lead so big that it's hard to even understand where that even came from. And I will explain to you guys what I do in the first 14 minutes that it helps me get such a big goal lead even though I die a lot. Finally made it into the game. My first in-game tip is going to be something I haven't heard anyone in the League of Legends community talk about or even mention. And that's gonna be respawn timers. So when you die, terrible, you give 300 gold to your opponent, that sucks. But what really matters is that you're dead for a certain amount of time and you're not on the map helping your team. That is the worst part about dying, is that you're not on the map. So how does the respawn timer work? Well, it has two factors. One is how late into the game it is. So the later into the game, the higher the death timer. And then two, how high level you are. The higher level you are, the higher the death timer. But here's the catch. I wrote down some numbers for you guys. This is level one, level two, level three, etc. Goes plus two seconds each level, looks good. But once you reach level six, and you level up to level 7, you get plus 5 seconds on your death timer. And then when you go from level 7 to level 8, you get plus 7 seconds on your death timer. And then it goes back to being plus 2 every level. This goes like this for every champion in the game. And it's really weird. I don't know why it is like that, but it's important to know. I'll explain later how you can use this to your advantage. With this knowledge, you can make sure that Every time you die, you're not gonna lose an advantage from it. All I'm going to say is bounty system. The bounty system is completely broken and I abuse it every single game. It's quite complicated, so I'll start off by talking about negative bounty. If someone dies a lot in a game, they'll be worth less and less gold. Uh, taking out all the other factors, whether your team is doing well, if you have a lot of CS or not. In general, this is how it's gonna look. Your first death, you're gonna be worth 300 gold. And then already by the second death, you're worth less with 274. And then third death, you're worth 220, and then etc, etc. Now if you have no kills, assist, and you have 5 deaths, your, your life is only worth 112 gold. And now, i watched so many guys out there, you have 100% heard this as well. They've said something like, Oh, a good player knows how to get carried. If you're having a bad game, play safe under your tower and let your team carry you. That is completely false. If you're going 0-5 and your life is only worth 112 gold, you need to be the playmaker. It is very low risk because you only give 100 gold, and huge reward. If you're feeding, you cannot start playing safe, because your life is not worth as much, so you need to be the one that makes plays, and risks. you gotta be the one risking your life. You can't let your teammates risk their lives. You gotta be the playmaker, especially if you're feeding. All these tips about playing safe when you're having a rough game, they're completely false. You gotta be the playmaker, because your life in this scenario would only be worth 112 gold, so you gotta make plays. Now let's talk about the positive bounty system, where if you die, you're worth more than 300 gold. What most people think happens is, if you get a goal lead over your opponent, you'll get a bounty on your head. Which makes sense, and it kinda works like that in general, but not quite. Because again, the system is completely broken, and I'm here to explain it and help you manipulate it. coming a mile away! In League of Legends, there's six main sources of income. There's kills, assist, minions, turrets destroyed, platings, and gold items, like cool and support items. Now, these different sources of income will have a different impact on the bounty. So let me give you an example. If you farm 300 gold worth of minions, that will give you a lower bounty than if you got one kill worth of 300 gold. So even though in both scenarios you got 300 gold, depending on where you got the gold from, that will determine how big your bounty is going to be. So what is the best way to make money in League of Legends? Kills are a terrible way to make money. If you can kill your opponent and that will give you a CS advantage or anything else above it, that's great. But just getting kills alone barely gives you anything, right? You get the 300 gold, but you're gonna realize once you're at 4 kills, 5 kills, you're already going to have a 1k gold bounty. So the bounty system is ruthless when it comes to kills. You're gonna get 1500 gold from kills, and then you die once and you give back 1k gold. Same goes with assist. Now assists don't give as much money, so it's not as noticeable. Going, going to minions, 
minions is a great way to make money. It's very stable. The bounty system doesn't attack doesn't attack it the same way as it does with kills. If you farm really well, you will rarely get get a bounty on your head. Now, of course, if you over farm, you are going to get a bounty, but it's not as bad as getting kills. Moving on. Turret's Destroyed. Turret's Destroyed works a little bit differently. What killing towers usually do is it enables the enemy team to get objective bounties. Or it goes one step, one step closer to getting objective bounties. Now objective bounties are not as scary as the individual bounties. So you shouldn't even worry about this. Destroying towers is always a good thing. It's a great way to make money. You're not gonna get an individual bounty for it. So it's great to do. Always destroy towers. And then we're moving on to platings and gold items. These two, getting cool and taking platings, is the single best way to make money. It's crazy. You know you can go a game getting 15 platings for yourself. You can get fi that's 2,600 gold. You can get 2,600 gold worth of platings and your bounty wouldn't move an inch. You will not get a singular inch of a bounty. It is completely tax-free. Riot bounty system doesn't account for platings. If you can, you should always secure this. That is why the first 14 minutes of the game are the most important minutes of any game. Hopefully you learned something new by now. But what is the point about knowing how something works if you don't know how to utilize it in your games? So that is what this section is for. Finally, we're getting into the gameplay. Starting off, we have the early game. The early game is the first 14 minutes of the game. It's also the most important minutes of any game. And I now you know what you might be thinking. Baus, there's no way I'm taking laning phase tips from you. You're the worst laner in the entire EU. And that is false, <laughs> okay? It is false. I am actually a great laner. I would consider myself... My, my biggest strength is actually my laning phase. Going into the stats... Here, in the league client, you take current season Scion, then you go into income. You can see that on average, at 15 minutes, I have a 900 goal lead every single game on average. 900 goal lead at 15 minutes. Now, if I'm going 0 and 4, and my la opponent laner is 4 and 0, it might look like I'm losing the lane. But again, on average, over my opponent, I have a 900 goal lead. Actually, my biggest strength is my laning phase. Yeah, I'm gonna show you what I do and how I get this goal lead. The idea is that you pick Sion, who is a late game champion. You buy Kull, who is a late game item. You take the runes that I chose, who are all late game runes. But how the hell are you supposed to get a goal lead into the early game then? That makes no sense. Well, your opponent is always going to beat you. So the idea is that you want to mismatch your tempo. Now that, that might, you might not understand what I mean there, so I'll try and explain it. But you want to be in lane when your opponent is not in lane. And you want to take the base when your opponent is in lane, if that makes sense. So, there's nothing you can, good, you can do level 1. Level 1, you both will come to lane at the same time. There's no strategy behind it. You're gonna die, because you're all late game. And he bought potions. He maybe got a door ends or whatever. So he's gonna kill you. Now what I like to do is I like to farm safe the first two waves. Try and get as many as you can. You'll take a lot of damage. It's fine to take a lot of damage. But as soon as wave 3 comes. As soon as it comes. What you do is you walk up and you just Q the whole wave. Your, the opponent will hit you and kill you. But you Q it. He will then kill you. And then after he kills you. You'll clear the whole thing in the passive. That is the strategy. And during this time, you get to clear the whole wave. And now, of course, it's able to crash in. Now it stayed a bit. But it's still able to crash in, right? And now you get a free reset. And you're back to lane. And your opponent, because he didn't focus the minions, he has to clear all of this. And it now pushes towards me. And keep in mind, during this time, even though he killed your entire health, po health bar, you at least did... 300 400 damage to him right like you at least did some damage to him so he's pushing all of this and he's half health or something like that so now you come back with a item advantage and health advantage so what does the opponent do now well he has two options he can stay and be at the health disadvantage and he will eventually die himself because again he has no health or no items or he can recall and try and tp if he tries to recall. That's where your minion Dima comes in handy. You gotta hurry. He's recalling. You have to hurry and push all of this. It's very, very, very important you do it as fast as you can. So you do this, you minion Dima that, 
and you know he's TPing right now and you try and push as fast as you can and now he's back to lane uh, but now he can't attack you because you have a full cannon wave with you and once this wave cannon he's gonna take it like like always what you do is you loop around and you loop around here and then you come behind him once you're behind him it's a free game GG you just won the game because again you're full late game, and if you guys know about the proxy strategy, nobody can kill you here. You're free to farm how much you want. You get 10 CS per minute no matter what you do here, because there's no enemies. If you, if, if, if a laning phase goes like that in the first 5 levels, you have done perfect. And then once you get here, all you basically do is just proxy till you die basically. Or proxy till you get out of mana. And once you run out of mana, what you do then is you use suicide with one Q on the wave. And that should clear the whole thing, in the, the rest in your passive. Just like this. Didn't get the cannon, but you get the idea. You get the idea. So dying enables you to mismatch your tempo. So when you're in base, your opponent has to clear the wave. And then once he's in base, you're in lane and you're able to push the lane. That is the best way of laning with this strategy is to not be in lane the same time as your opponent is in lane. You farm minions when he's not here, he's farming them when you're not there. That is the best way. This strategy never fails. Always do that. Not every laning phase is pixel perfect, but things you have to think about is no matter what, you need to protect your tower. She's the most precious thing in your life. Her health bar is more important than your own health bar. And one way to keep your tower safe is to always push. Every single wave that comes, you will always shove it. Push it. As soon as it's here, you do a full combo on it and you kill it. Every single wave. This will, even if you die or not, this will always protect your tower, no matter what. If you're level 6 or below, you always have to push the wave here. When it, when it comes here, you'll have to push it. If you are level 7, you have to push the wave around here. That is better. Because if you die and you're level 7 here, your death timer is actually going to be too long to be able to protect your tower. So, let's say I die here. The death timer now is actually going to be too long comparing to level 6. Look, 15 seconds, so you're actually not gonna be able to run, you're not going to be able to run back and defend your tower. So, if you're level 6 or below, you catch the wave here, shove it instantly. If you're level 7 or above, you have to proxy and you have to catch the wave here. Best thing would be if you catch the wave here. Working ourselves into the mid game, this is minute 14 to 25 maybe, I'm not quite sure. The mid game. What do I like to do? I like to be on the side lane all the time. Coming from base, maybe you've died, maybe you recalled. What do you do? Well, you check which lane you go to, either top or bot. You never go mid, either top or bot. So I like to see myself as a turret destroyer. So let's say this tower is gone. Then I will go bot lane and I'm gonna work on this tower. Now a very important thing if you want a side lane is to push the wave first. Alright, so you're gonna be versus an another opponent, target dummy again. Your job is to get the wave first. If you're able to catch the wave as soon as it comes, boom, boom, it's cleared, let's say. And then your wave is coming here. If his wave is already cleared, you then have a roam timer that you can either help your team. What I like to do is I like to sneak around, loop around here and proxy. Stay here and then he, cl he clears the wave, right? And then, when this wave comes, clear it, and now you have an insane timer. So wh what you're gonna do then, is you're gonna threaten a roam. If your opponent answers the roam by roaming himself, then your wave is crashing into the tower, and you just go back, and you'll take the tower, basically. But the important thing is to always clear the wave before your opponent. That is what enables tempo. If you have a tempo advantage, you can then roam before him, or you can take tower. Always clear the wave first. I will never join a fight with my team unless it's the third dragon, or the fourth dragon, or the baron. If it's one of those three, I might join the team fight. But if it's anything else, second dragon, herald, or what people even like to do is they like to randomly team fight in mid lane without any objective being on the map. If there's no objective on the map, and a team fight breaks out in mid lane, don't join it. Stay side lane. It's not worth to join team fights who don't have an objective in them as a top laner. But 
getting into the late game after 25 minutes, let's say, you're level 15 or something by then. What do you do in the late game? You come from base? Guess what? You still go side lane. You go side lane and you push out. Again, you shouldn't let waves crash into your tower. Here's the thing with late game. All my strategies, you can throw them out of the window now. Because all of a sudden, deaths are relevant. And dying is a really bad thing. Because your death timer is like 30-40 seconds by now. So dying is very risky. And getting kills on your opponent has insane value. So, I will look to play more safe, but also look to kill my opponent a lot more. Whether I assassinate them or whatever, right? Usually by now, if you have all the scaling set up, you will be stronger than your opponent anyway, so you're just gonna beat him most of the games. How do you team fight with Sion? You always want to flank, and that's a great thing, because you come from you come from a side lane, so flanking is very easy. If there's a fight in mid 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 uh, mid lane, you will push the wave here, and then you will roll, you will roll all the way here, and look at this flank you have. You go right into the enemies if the fight were to break out here. So, if you were to team fight with Sun, you want to flank. Always flank. Getting into tips and tricks that help me win the game. I won't go over the normal ones, I'll just go over the ones I see people don't use. So starting off with Sion, getting into the passive. If you're already melee ranged with your opponent, don't use your active. Once they flash away, that's when you use your active ability. Like here, if you're in range, once he flashes away, then you run after with your, with your ability. What most sound players do is, as soon as they get into the passive, they will instantly click the ability and they will waste your speed boost. Don't do that. Another thing, close range ultis. If you're close range like this with your opponent, don't just click R. That screws up your camera, it's a lot harder to hit, it's just very sloppy to make. Instead, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna click R plus Q at the same time. R plus Q. Instead of your camera screwing up, it's gonna make this. Much more nicer, a lot easier to hit. It doesn't mess up your camera. It's a, it's a weird little bug, I guess you could say. But always use this for melee range ultis. R plus Q. And then into another Q or whatever you wanna do after that. Another thing is when you camp the bushes, bush queues. Uh, my, my signature move is to camp a bush and queue them from Fog of War, right? What I see a lot of players do is, they're gonna walk in the bush, they're gonna have their opponent, and they're gonna charge the queue, like that. That is not how you're supposed to charge it from the bush. In every single bush, you can always make an extra step. So don't go in here and charge the queue, Always click on this pixel to be right on the edge. This gives you way more range, right? Every bush has a, has a pixel. You click on it, and then you get max range. It's way better. Getting into my second champion here, we have Gragas. The thing with Gragas is that he has unlimited amount of insane combos you can make, right? Let me show you one. Okay. Looks a little bit rough. I failed it. I have thousands of hours on Gragas, and I still can't, for the life of me, make these combos work. So you're not gonna go for these combos. They're super unreliable and way too hard to make. I have one, one combo. That's all you're gonna need. That's W E Q flash auto. It's super standard. Everybody knows about it. And then pop the Q as late as you can. It's the only combo you will need. You follow up with an ulti after it or whatever you want to do. Doing these crazy flashy combos are too unreliable. Don't do them. Only go for this combo. It's the only thing you'll need to rank up. It's just as good as the other combo. It just looks... It doesn't look as cool. But we're not playing to look cool. We're playing to rank up. Another trick is... When your opponent is under his tower. You want to cook up your barrel. And then you want to throw him into it. That's really hard to do if your opponent is under tower, because the tower will block them from being displaced. So what I like to do is, I like to cook the barrel under the tower. Your opponent has to move, and then you can push them into it, right? Now the best way to push your opponent into your barrel is to E into ult. So you do Q, you walk up to them, E ult. This will never fail, and it's an insanely broken strategy. Walk up to them, and then once they're here, you can move them anywhere. Because you can E. They can't, they can't dodge that CC. If you just ulti them from far away, they can easily dodge it. So, cook the barrel on the tower, and then E ulti. 
and it will always go where you want it to go. Another trick on Gragas is the invincible barrel Q. If you put your Q inside of a wall, this is now invincible to your opponent. They can't see it. If you put it inside a wall, they won't be able to see it. The same thing as putting it into a bush. This is being used a little bit, but it is not nearly being used as often as it should. It's such an insanely OP strat. Even here, this barrel is completely invincible to your opponent. So they're just gonna walk straight into it, and they're gonna take maximum damage. Completely invincible Q. Always use the Q into the wall. Our champion, Ramus. Very high mechanical skill champion. <laughs> no, but there are stuff you need to think about. There are. So first up, you have a 4 mail. Minions are spawning. If you use your Q while you have your W, your W gets removed. So, same goes with the ulti. Your W gets removed. Your W deals 114 damage per attack. The idea is that you should never ever cancel your own W. If your opponent is, is on 100 health, it's better to keep holding the W than to try and ulti them, because that removes the W. And your ulti barely deals the same amount of damage as one auto attack. As long as your W is active, all you're gonna do is walk around and taunt people. Don't use your Q, don't use your ulti. When it runs out, then you're free to do what you want. Another thing I like to do is, people use Ramus ulti as an engage tool. I don't use it as an engage tool. I always run into my opponent with my Q, and I do the crazy taunt combo. Very hard to do, right? Uh, no, but the idea is that once your W gets expired, your opponent is gonna look to kill you. Now they're all gonna jump on you and kill you. That's when you need your ulti to run away. I don't like to engage with my ulti, because I like to disengage with it when I don't have my W up. Those are like the two, <laughs> the two combos I could find on the champion. Not a very hard champion to play. Um, of course, the idea with Ramus is you can't clear a wave normally. Oh, oh, this takes a year to clear. The whole idea behind Ramus is you want you don't want your 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 wave your own minions nearby. You need your the enemy minions to only attack you. Because all of a sudden, you clear the wave a whole lot faster. So that is that is the one trick I could give on Ramus is to always be the only the only ally nearby. So that's the only thing people can attack. Never be close to your own minion wave in a way. Or champion and final champion is gonna be Quinn the bird. The combo is gonna look something like this: E claw auto Q auto. So it's pretty straightforward. It is the best combo to make. E claw to get melee range and then just. Auto Q Auto. This has insane damage, it would always one shot in the middle and late game. One way to improve it is if you're playing versus someone who you need a little bit more damage to and you don't need the extra range. As you can see, your E is longer range than your Auto, but if, if that's not gonna be a problem, the range, then what you can do is you can run up and before the same combo, you Auto them first. It's like that. This combo will always one shot no matter what. You can do the same combo, but with flash. E flash, uh, because the E backflip takes such a long time. It's like a, it's like a self stun in a way. So if you can remove the stun by flashing on top of your opponent, or even flashing sideways, that's a really useful combo to make as well. But if you have claw, you should obviously use that instead. One more trick, which I shouldn't be teaching you. <laughs> it's a bug. I use it, I'm a dirty bug abuser. Taking a look at the ulti damage, 98. This is 98 damage, which makes sense. If you die on Quinn, your first ulti on the way back is gonna deal 196 damage. It deals double the amount of damage your first ulti back after a death. Keep this in mind, <laughs> I mean I abuse it, I know I'm bug abusing but what, it's, it's part of the game. That's probably gonna be fixed soon, but while it's still in the game, make sure to abuse it. It has ins it gives you such an insane damage spike, especially into the late game, because this has a decent amount of AD scaling. So if you actually get some items under the belt, um, like that, all of a sudden, it deals 200 more damage. So it's really good to keep that in mind. Your first, your first ulti back after death is gonna deal double amount of damage. Alright, let's wrap this guide up. Let's summarize it. What did we learn today? Um, runes, 
Demolish, really good. Scaling runes, incredibly good. Always go for scaling runes. Items, hopefully I taught you something about the Dorans. Stay away from them, don't build them. Mm, going into in-game, always push lane if you can. Always try and be the pusher. If you're gonna die, make sure you die before level 7. And if you're playing Sion, dying when pushing before level 7 is actually good for you. Your KDA is mostly irrelevant. You need to look at gold income instead. You shouldn't go for kills. You should go for money. Make sure you split push. Split pushing is your main objective. You're the turret destroyer. And yeah, hopefully I taught you something about the combos as well. Thank you so much for watching this guide. I did put a lot of effort into the video. So if you could uh, drop a like and <laughs> no, that is fine. Watching the video is more than enough. Thank you so much and yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day.